Okay, good morning, everybody. Everybody as well. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to the booth. Thanks so much for joining us. We spent the whole week talking about this idea of identity, using a little bit of football. Listen, it's Super Bowl week. You know, you got to give after Sunday. Like, now we got to. What are we going to talk about? GM changes and coaches and. But you got to let the football guys have a couple more days. So we're talk about Tom Brady. For those of you who don't know who Tom Brady is, he's a quarterback, maybe the greatest of all time. He was picked 199th in the draft, which is incredible. That's the sixth round. I think there were five quarterbacks picked before him, considered to be too slow, too lanky, not this, not that. Became the greatest ever. Now, if you'd ask me about Tom Brady, 22 years in, in the league, one of the oldest guys in the, in the league, the life of a football player doesn't last past 30, mid-30s. You know how hard it is on your body? You know how fast everyone else is? He was in mid, he was mid-40s. I think Tom Brady's like 44. So he retires. And he sends around an email. And I was upset in the beginning. And I was not really upset, but I was disappointed. And I'll tell you why. Because when great people retire, they don't announce they're retiring like in a, in a press conference. When great people retire from a sport, they give you like a year's heads up, right? They, they say, we're retiring after this season so that the whole world now could like acclimate to it, right? Like regular players like finish and they're like, it's been a pleasure. Like, thanks. It's been great, right? Great players, the best players don't do that, right? They say it's the last year so that everyone could say goodbye, so that the last game everybody can cry. So they can go from stadium to stadium and someone can give them a, a, a prize. Right? That happens all the time. For those of you who remember Mariano Rivera, Mariano Rivera announced his retirement, right? And every stadium that year gave him like broken bats and they gave him this and they gave him that and he said goodbye and he waved and everybody said goodbye, right? Derek Jeter, Michael Jordan. Like you look at the past. The regular players retire, right? Mediocre players try not to retire, but they don't get picked up and they get traded, whatever it is. But the best players, they don't just say goodbye, like in a tweet, they say, well, retiring after the next year. And so that the next year, every team could like, you know, clap when they come on the field, clap when they leave the field. Everyone could say, you know, they could have bobblehead day every time they come. You know what I'm saying? They could be really, especially Tom Brady, he was a Patriot and he was a Buck. You would go back to, to, to New England and they would, you know, have a whole presentation ceremony and then everyone would cry and everyone would give out his jersey. Like, you know, give everybody like a year to like process that you're leaving. So when I heard these retiring, I'm like, there's no way he's retiring. I called it wrong. I'm like, there's no way. There's no way he's retiring. They, 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 that's not how it works. That's not the script. He's the GOAT, the greatest of all time. They don't just, like, tweet you on vacation, right? And they don't do it during, like, Super Bowl week. They wait till there's no news. You understand, like, this thing's all choreographed. You know, and th when there's no news at all, like, you know, in March... Then they do it. This becomes breaking news for the next week. Everyone's waiting for him to come back. Like, so I was like, there's no way it's happening. So someone's like, yeah, no, it happened. I'm like, it's not. And then they showed me his, his, I don't know if it was a tweet or Instagram post. It was something that was relatively unimpressive. So I read it. And I want to read to you one line from it. And I want to show you how how it all connects to what we've been talking about. This is not about football. I hope nobody thinks that what I'm talking about is ever about football. Right? Football is a metaphor for life. Football is just a means. Here's what he says. Listen to this. It was a long you know, thing he wrote. Here's what he wrote. I've always believed that the sport of football is an all-in pr proposition. If it's 100% competitive com commitment, if that's not there, you won't succeed. That's what I love about our game. There's a physical, mental, and emotional challenge every single day that has to be in there. Da -da 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 -da. And I've tried my best over the past 22 years to do that. There's no shorts to success. Here it goes. This is what I want you to focus on. I have loved my NFL career. Now it's time to focus my time and attention and energy on other things that require my attention. And I read that line, and it felt to me that the person who wrote this line 
doesn't have one identity called quarterback. Tom Brady was a quarterback his whole life. His whole aspirations in life was being a football player. When he made it to Michigan, he yearned to be a starting quarterback. He played in front of 80,000 people. When he got to the Patriots, he became a, uh, he wanted to be the starting quarterback. He won, I don't think, five Super Bowls. He played in, I think, seven Super Bowls. Like, Tom Brady wasn't like a college player. He wasn't like a great high school athlete. Tom Brady was maybe one of the greatest NFL players of all time. Like, where else are you ever going to get that much social acceptance and positive feedback than playing at the highest level of your sport and being the best at your sport? Like, imagine being the best doctor Okay, I'm not connecting football players and doctors, but imagine being the best doctor in the best hospital. Imagine being the best lawyer in the best law. Imagine being the best teacher in the best school. Like, imagine being at the top of your field in an environment that is the most competitive in the world. Imagine being the best quarterback in the NFL. Can you imagine a place there is more positive reinforcement. Can you imagine a place for, can you imagine a situation where it is more conducive for what you do to be who you are? How, how do you not think that way? And it dawned on me that, and I'll, blaming other players, but maybe had Tom announced his retirement after a season, that would be what he needed to get out. Maybe that's what happens with these athletes. They get too old. It becomes too hard. Competitive sports is very taxing on the body. You think like they get out and just play ball. They don't. They kill themselves all the time. And at some point, you gotta let it go. But it's hard to leave, that's who you are. So you, and I'm not saying that people do this subconsciously, you bask, you bask in it one more time. You take one more lap. You say, I'm, I'm retiring in a year. And then you lap around the world. You lap around the country. And you soak in one more time. Last dance. One more run. One more. Mm. Because I can't, I can't pull away from you. I can't let it go. Maybe what, what you see here is why he was the best. Maybe. Because while he killed for it every day, it never became him. He never had to be the football player as an identity. He was always somebody else. And football was one of the garments he wore, even though he wore it all the time. Maybe the pathway to becoming the best at something is to not let that thing be your identity. Then you can adapt. Then you can change then you can grow. Then you could lose without it destroying you. Then you could pivot when you need to pivot. Then you could capitalize on an opportunity that may be beneath you because you never let it get to you. You never let it get to you because it's not who you are. When you read what happened, and just pull yourself back? Would you ever think that the best player of a, of a sport would just send a text saying, thanks, but I'm out? Ever? What he was writing in there, if you read it again, is, this isn't who I am. I gotta give 100% to this. I'm not this guy anymore. I have to focus my energy elsewhere.
there are other parts of my life that are me, my companies, my business, my, my children, my wife, my family, whatever it is. I played football. I didn't become football. Now, because it never was me, I can take it off comfortably and hang it back up. That, that it, that's it. That's it right there. That's the distinction. When you don't become something, when you are something above the things you do, it gives you the perspective to do those things even better. Maybe the pathway to being the goat, to being the best, is to be able to not make it who you are. You practice medicine. You don't. You're even though you say I'm a doctor, it doesn't, doesn't mean that your life. I'm a mom. I'm a dad. Whatever. But those are things that I wear. Who I am is an intangible source of energy called the soul that can always adapt, that can always change my roles, that can always upgrade my roles, that can always come back after I get knocked down. I am a source of energy that's connected to the divine. And for now, I wear the, the garment called football player, but that's not who I am. If you look at it from those eyes, you'll see this is maybe the greatest retirement we've ever seen. The goat being the goat, even in retirement. All right, we'll talk about it. All right, everybody. Have a great day. Think about this. When you see yourself getting upset about things in your life, ask yourself, is it coming because I'm too attached to the things that I do or that I have? Once you free yourself, you don't have less. You have more. All right, have a great day. With God's help, we'll speak again tomorrow. Living on a lifeline. The world doesn't ever seem to change Looking for the sunshine But you're caught up in the rain It's like your eyes Are wide open but you cannot see You're watching life Pass you by like one, two, three Walking in destruction The winds of life Blur your vision All the devastation Forever feels like you're on the run It's time No one else can set you free You're locked inside and only you have got the key